Hi, my name is Siti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, I'm going to share my top 10 tips when working in Google Sites. So let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, Google Sites is amazingly powerful and it's constantly getting better, but I do have 10 tips that will up your Google Sites game. And the first tip is to copy headers. Now, we all know that you can use different headers on Google Sites, but did you know that when you're creating a new page, you can easily copy a previously designed header? Now, the way you do this is by first selecting the page of which you would like to copy the header. Now, once you have this page highlighted, you're going to click on the plus icon that's going to create a new page. Now, that new page will automatically copy over the header. Now, let's say that you want to copy the header from the second page, the about page. Well, simply click on the about page first and then click on new page. What's going to happen now is it's going to copy that and it's also going to copy the header that you had on that page. This is a huge time saver when you're creating multiple pages or when you're starting afresh with a brand new website and you've only designed one, two, maybe three headers. Which brings me neatly to the second tip and that's to add a little bit of motion or movement to your headers. Now, we cannot upload video to our headers but we can upload a GIF or GIF file. Now, uploading a GIF or GIF file will enable us to add a bit of movement to to our headers. Now, I highly recommend looking into cinemagraphs. I love cinemagraphs and they are not too distracting, yet they do bring that special animation effect to your website. On to a third tip. Now, this third tip is more about the body and the content on your website. Now, adding images and text is all great, but one of the top tips would be to drag and drop your text underneath or just above an image. This allows you to align it vertically and create a sort of caption effect for your images. Now text and images are not the only things that we can put onto our Google Sites. Many of us are putting video on the Google Sites. Now many people will use YouTube videos and you might embed this video onto your Google Sites but sometimes especially when working in schools privacy is an issue so we do want to make sure that we can also embed video that is not publicly available or not uploaded to YouTube. Now can we do this? Yes by using Google Drive any video you store on your Google Drive can be put onto your Google Sites. Simply go to the Insert menu, select From Drive, and then find that video. Once that video is uploaded onto your Google Sites, it will now be visible to anyone who comes to your Google Sites without being on YouTube. I do recommend that you have a look at the incognito browser and the published view of your website to make sure everyone can actually see the video. Otherwise, you'll have to change the permissions of that video file prior to publishing the website. And let's say that you have a page with resources and it has to be published on your website, but you do not want to have it in your navigation at the top. No problem, we can hide pages. Simply go to your pages browser, click on those three dots, and then select hide from navigation. The page is still accessible using the URL, but it no longer shows up at the top. You can also link to this page within your document or within other pages by simply using the hyperlink function. And this brings us to tip number six, social media. Now social media is everywhere and Google Sites allows us to embed all sorts of social media interaction. We can embed like buttons, we can get Twitter posts and Facebook posts, we can even add some Facebook comments. Now the main two I'm going to show you today are Facebook and Twitter, but many of the other social media platforms also have embed codes. Now for Twitter it's fairly straightforward. Go to the tweet that you would like to embed and then within the drop down menu you will find an embed code. If there is anything that you'd like to embed that is not available via this simple drop down menu you can go to publish.twitter.com. Now there you will be given the option to embed lists and all sorts of other things. And for Facebook, we're going to go to the developer social plugins. Now, the reason we're using this one is because it allows us to not only embed posts, but also comments, like buttons, and all other types of interactions with Facebook. Now, on the developer page, which I will link in that description below, so scroll down and find the link. There, you can then select whichever plugin you'd like to use, and then simply put the relevant URL in there. I'm going to quickly show you how it works for a post. So I have a URL here for a public post. I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to set the width to what I would like it to be and I'm going to click on get code. Now once this code is opened this gives me two options. I can either choose to use the iframe or I can use the JavaScript. 
script. Now I'm going to use JavaScript. Now you'll see there are two sets of code and I'm going to have to copy both. So let's start with the first and let's copy that first snippet of code and let's go to our Google Sites. We're going to double click, embed, embed code and we're going to paste it right there. Now, don't do anything yet because we also need that second snippet of code. So let's go back to Facebook and let's copy the second snippet of code. We're now going to return to our Google Sites embed code and paste it below the previous code. Now, don't worry about any other tags. Google Sites will interpret the code for you. Go ahead and click on next. You get a little preview and then we're going to save. Now, as soon as you've done this, you will see that your post or your comment, whichever you've chosen, shows up on your Google Sites. You can now go ahead and publish and it will be viewable from your Google Sites. Do take note, if the comment or post is a private post, you will not be able to use this. And talking about interactivity, this brings us to my tip number seven, and that's use anchor tags. Now, when you have very long, complex pages with different headings, sometimes we'd like to anchor to a certain heading. So let's say that on page three, you want to fast forward to the seventh heading. Well, what you can do is once your page is published, you can hover over one of these headers. What you will see on the left-hand side is that there is a little icon that appears, and this is a link icon. Go ahead and click on that. And what that does is it copies an anchor link. This anchor link will automatically send people to this heading. So you don't have to start at the top of a page and scroll down. We can use these links within any other hyperlink on our Google Sites. This will not only save time for the visitors, but it also makes our website a lot more enjoyable to navigate. There's only one downside to using this. At the moment, these anchor links will open up in a new tab. Hopefully this will get sorted soon by Google Sites, but in the meantime, I think it's a great feature that definitely is often overlooked. And then, as you will have seen from my other Google Sites videos, branding is huge. So tip number eight is add your personal branding. Please use the fav icon and the logo. Now, in order to add a logo, simply hover over the top left of your workspace. That's where the name for your website is. And then you will see an option to add a logo. Go ahead and click on that. And you can now either upload or select a logo for your website. Now, this logo will appear on every single page of your website. It is great to have logos that interact with the navigation bar or simply add a touch of design to the website. The second part of this branding is the fave icon. Now the fave icon is the icon that you see at the top of a tab whenever you're visiting a website or it's also visible when it's stored as a bookmark. Now this icon can be uploaded by you and it can also represent your personal branding. Now to change your fave icon you're going to have to navigate to the three dots at the top. Once you've clicked on those three dots you're going to scroll down and find add fave icon. Go ahead and upload your own image and don't worry if you're not seeing it yet. This will only go live once your website is published. On to tip number nine. Now we all know that we can insert files and videos and images, but did you know that Google Sites allows you to insert an entire folder structure? So the way to do this is simply go to that insert menu, say from drive, and now you're going to find the folder you'd like to insert onto your Google Sites. Click on that folder once and before you dive into the folder, you'll note that there is an insert button. Go ahead and click on that insert button. What this does is it brings the entire folder with that folder structure. Now, if you have the permissions on Google Drive set so that anyone with the link can access, then on your public site, everyone will see the contents of this folder. Now, what's great is whenever you add a document onto that folder, it automatically appears on your Google Sites and you don't have to worry about changing permissions or uploading new files. I love this feature. And again, often people overlook this by simply diving into the folder and adding individual files. And that brings me to tip number 10. Your navigation is very useful, but sometimes we want to send people from our Google Sites to either our social media or another platform. In my case, the YouTube channel. You can add external links to your navigation as well. So in your Pages browser, go ahead and select the plus icon, but instead of clicking on new page, you're now going to select new link. Now what this is going to do is it's going to add it to the top of your navigation like everything else, but it is an external link. So this is where you can put your channel link or any other website 
that you'd like to link out to. And those are my top 10 tips when working in Google Sites. Now, I hope you found this video helpful. If you liked it, give it a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified of new videos. And again, dive into the comment section to let me know what you like best, which tip did I miss, and what do you use most often in Google Sites. In the meantime, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.